Welcome to part two of the digestive system notes. We've gone from mouth to stomach. Let's keep going on our 30 foot journey. The next stop is the pancreas. So label this on your drawing and then underneath your drawing, let's do some notes on the pancreas. Now the pancreas is the most underappreciated part of the digestive system. Without the pancreas, your whole digestive system wouldn't work because of these digestive enzymes. Now remember I said enzymes are a lot like stomach acid. Without these enzymes you wouldn't be able to chemically digest your food. And the small intestine gets all the credit for doing the chemical digestion but without this guy, this yellowish looking blob dumping in all these chemicals, it wouldn't be able to digest anything in the small intestine. Now in order to keep everything neutral in the small intestine. And what I mean by neutral is the stomach acid is so um, acidic or if you don't understand acidic it's so um, caustic, it's so dangerous to your cells. I mean your stomach acid would digest your own foot if you put it in your stomach. We've got to have this sodium bicarbonate to neutralize the stomach acid. So here's our stomach, S for stomach, and here's the start of your small intestine. So see these little ducts, these little passageways right here? They are dumping both these digestive enzymes and the stuff called sodium bicarbonate to neutralize or take care of that acid so it doesn't digest you, the cells of the small intestine once it gets there. So there's your pancreas. It's sort of hidden here behind your stomach. And now we're on our way to the small intestine. I'm a liar. We're going to the liver first. The liver is huge. It's the main... Uh, main organ of the small intestine mainly because it's so big. Now what I mean by main, I, I shouldn't say main, the main organ I would argue is actually the small intestine but it is by far the biggest but its role in the digestive system is really narrow. The main thing it does is it makes this stuff called bile which dissolves fat and the bile is stored in the gallbladder. So here's your huge liver and here's the itty bitty gallbladder right there. So that's all we need to know about the liver in regards to the digestive system. So here we've got liver, here's this little kind of guy, the gallbladder. Now let's talk about the small intestine. Small intestine is awesome. The small intestine is the primary site of chemical digestion. And this is the most missed question on quizzes. Where does most of the chemical digestion occur? Most people think it's the stomach, but it's not. It's here in the small intestine. Where it's, um, where it's 20 feet long. I mean, that's nuts. 30 feet is mouth to anus, and of that 30, the vast majority is right here. It's all wound up. And that's where, once your food enters the small intestines, gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller because of all those digestive enzymes until eventually, see when we zoom in here on the small intestine, it's so small, it can just hop, hop into um, these these arteries and veins and shoom, shoom, shoom go off to your cells. So that's why it says absorbs food into your bloodstream. Now the next spot on our way from the small intestine is the large intestine. So here we have 20 feet and then all of a sudden see here it connects and it's like large intestine up, down, over. So after you label the large intestine let's do a couple bullets and oh, oh, don't forget the appendix. Look at this little dude right here, the little dangle. That's your appendix. Um, and then, I forget, after the large intestine we have our appendix. We have this section right here that is called the rectum. And then finally, the last sphincter, just like the cardiac and pyloric sphincter, it is known as the anus. So now let's do a couple bullets on the large intestine. The large intestine is also known as your colon. And the main job of the large intestine is water removal um, to prevent diarrhea and constipation. Diarrhea, too much water, constipation, not enough water. Something else cool about the large intestine is there's lots of little bacteria, little prokaryotic dudes, mmm, all hanging out in here. And they are feeding on all of that undigestible, whoa, come back, undigested food you have. So this would be things like corn and a lot of plant matter are there in the um, large intestine for the bacteria to feed on. Now let's talk about the appendix. Here's that little appendix right here, and it is an unused body part. Now I bet some of you might have had your appendix inflamed when you were a kid and you had to go to the hospital and they had to take it out. A lot of people think the appendix used to be an organ used for digesting plant matter, um, maybe when human species um, used to be more of an ape-like species and we ate plants. But for now, 
most of us just eat plants um, for fiber and to help food sort of like move through the colon and just sort of like push food through. Um, that's why we don't use the appendix anymore. Now the rectum, not a lot going on here. The rectum is just where we store our feces. And as you know, as we have feces store up, it pushes against the walls of the rectum right here. And that's what triggers you to think, hey, I need to go to the bathroom. And the anus is that final sphincter that controls your bowel movements here at the bottom. Well, congratulations! You survived your 30-foot journey from mouth to anus. My expectation is you should be able to describe the parts from mouth to anus and tell me where physical and chemical digestion occur along those parts. And you're going to use these skills when it's time for frog dissection. Do -do 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 -do. Which parts of the frog are like us and which parts are not? Stay tuned to find out.